well you hadika you've raised the expectations quite a bit so i would like to start off by thanking uh, samir hud boy saab and the vadi vice chancellor and atar usama i know atar usama has been instrumental in extending this invitation because really i haven't added an iota to the stock of knowledge that we call bioengineering it just happened to be at an interesting point in space and an interesting point in time and i've just been a keen observer of what's going on here so i've divided my presentation into three parts i'll try to be brisk but i do apologize if i'm not able to cover all of it so the first part is about academic programming since i it's happened stands that i'm the dean of the school of science and engineering i can share some interesting insights about our academic programming at this school and how this is contributing in an innovative way to bioengineering and to contemporary biology and what do we mean by biology the second is uh, we do not live in an ivory tower hum sheesh mahal mein nahi rehte we have to take our science our ideas out to the general public 240 million people i was walking coming into karachi and i saw those banners those beautiful banners karachi ki ginti sahi karo right so census is going on so we have a huge population the fifth or sixth largest country in the world if science is just for the elite just for the students who can get into lums or the usman institute or qaid azam university or that's just an minuscule number how do we get our scientific knowledge our awareness out into the masses so I, i'll give some examples from that and the third is uh, something if i have time some technology development that i do next slide please agli slide please <coughs> so ye acha hai theek hai ye kaam kar rahe hain so just keep in mind keep in mind uh, that when a student in pakistan Uh, goes through an FSC or an A level. Generally, we have uh, a dichotomy of sorts. A student can either do pre-engineering or pre-medical, sometimes science and arts. But a student cannot study biology and mathematics at the same time. So we make this decision very early on in our students' educational careers. So we have to live with this reality, though we should strive to change it. But this is our current reality. so we admit these students into the school of science and engineering and this is these are the programs that we currently offer we have undergraduate degrees in all the four basic sciences and two kinds of engineering uh, and computer science we have a masters program in each of them and some specialized masters programs an ms in clinical research is coming up an ms in biomedical systems is coming up and phd programs in all of these disciplines and of course the strength of our institute is that we can offer minors so we have minors in robotics quantum technologies a new minor coming up in computational biology but any student who's an engineer uh, or a physicist or a mathematician could do a minor in biology as well or could do a minor in robotics as well so this is the kind of uh, latitude that we need to give to our students and there are not many universities in pakistan that offer this creative license of picking and choosing i think freedom is really important uh and then comes our core curriculum so every biologist even if you're from pre medical background or a pre pre engineering background one needs to take lots of physics lots of mathematics for 2 years the mathematics comes in two flavors a generalist maths and an honors version and then we have labs in biology physics chemistry and proper courses in biology and i'm going to share the outline there these two labs the engineering and the physics lab we're now merging into a measurement and design lab biology and chemistry we are merging into an integrative life laboratory so we can spend uh, hours and hours talking about these ideas but this is the overall scheme of things that we do at the school of science and engineering in the bio 100 course there are about 400 students every engineer every mathematician computer scientist has to take this course it's a core course it's mandatory and the five key areas in this course are macromolecules genes omics dna disease and 
So every student walking off with an engineering degree, proudly as a PEC accredited engineer, knows omics. He, he or she knows about proteins. He or she knows about DNA recombinant technology. So this is a kind of transformation that is taking place in our country. Uh, then there is a laboratory, hands-on skills in four of these areas. And some of these uh, experiments take place in not just our labs, but in a lab which is really free, and that is the DOSI plane. So every year we pin, uh, we pin up and tag along stu 150 students from the University of Baltistan, 150 students from our school. They converge in Skardu or the whereabouts of Skardu and do experiential learning in plant collection, extracting DNAs, looking at things under microscopes, lichen, fungi, algae, and so on. So it's a wonderful experience. So uh, even if we are resource limited, there are innovative ways of bypassing this, this limitation. And then there's another liberty that we enjoy, a luxury that we enjoy, which I hope our universities in Pakistan can leapfrog from here or take some ideas, is that the ability to carve out and orchestrate new courses on the fly. Of course, this needs some check and some measure of check and balance, but I know many, I'm on boards of many universities. If one were to launch a course on, say, even my area, quantum computing, and it's not there in their curriculum handbook, it might take ages. So the ability to carve out new courses which are interdisciplinary and which are taught not possibly by regular tenure tra track faculty, but by the new kinds of positions that we've created, such as professors of practice, resident scientists, adjunct faculty. Uh, so this is one of our key things that we're really, really proud of. So for example, here is a theoretician, a mathematician, in fact, teaching computational neuroscience. She's a, she comes from Berlin, uh, a physiotherapist. Abis Jafri, who is teaching a course on human biomechanics, and three faculty members, one surgeon, one public health uh, kind of expert, and one computer scientist teaching a course on neuroscience. So I would just request to play the top video a little bit, please, so that Dr. Abis Jafri, who's standing in a biomechanics lab, is explaining his course here. I'm really excited to be in spring to teach this course that is Introduction to Biomechanics. This is the first time this content has been introduced in Pakistan and then also in Lam. So Biomechanics is a study of human motion. It involves physics, specifically mechanics. It involves anatomy and physiology. It's the combination of three. And there are some methods to measure human motion. The best one is 3D human motion capture. So right now, I'm standing in Lam's uh, PCB Biomechanics lab. And you can see I have motion capture system in my background. I have a marker in my hand. These markers are used uh, to measure human motion. And we'll talk about that in this class. That's How it. Okay, that. ugly, so slide. We have the ugly slide. Ugly slide, which is Ugly slide, which My name is Dr. Right. Another uh, really innovative thing that we've just rolled out is we're not a medical school. We're not a veterinary school. We're not an agriculture university. So people ask the question, if you're not an agricultural university, you can't do agriculture. You can't do plant biotech. You're not a veterinary school. You cannot have an animal house. But trying to break these silos. Lums cannot have a medical school for some reasons. I can explain offline. But we want the medical profession in this country to change. So we've come up with an agreement with a sister institution, Shalimar Medical and Dental College, under the kind Ashirbad of Pakistan Medical and Dental Council. So what we do is that Shalimar admits its medical students, and before they undertake the grind of medical education, which is five years long, they spend an additional year at LUMS in our biology laboratories and do this coursework, sorry do this coursework, introductory biology, virology, microbiology, biochemistry, lab work, so that our doctors, our practitioners, can act like scientists. They can la act like curious investigators of this complex machinery, which Fessel calls is the most complex, most intricate uh, 
object system that we know of today. So this is another medical enrichment program that we've just launched, fully funded, scholarships are available for all these medical students. And we also have probably, we are the only university which is not an agriculture university, which is not an arid university, not the Barani University that has agricultural fields on our premises. And we do a lot of agri-tech. Uh, and this is not genetically modifying crops. It's mostly about uh, regenerative agriculture using zero fertilizer, zero chemical input, and exploiting the power and potency of the biome that naturally exists in soil. Uh, we're trying to couple our farms with agrivoltics and coming up with these different kinds of tools so that we can uh, use uh, digital t tools to enhance our productivity. Uh, of course, we have a very strong group on computational and systems biology. So s just imagine the scenario. We have s seven or eight faculty lines in the Department of Biology and uh, devoting one third of those lines to people, not even biologists, is a really risky undertaking. But we were adventurous, uh, we broke the stereotype and hired mathematicians and statisticians and computer scientists into the biology department who do not even have a degree in biology. Now, I'm an engineer. After my engineering, I could not get admission into M M Phil or MSc Physics in Kaidazam University. And not even in my own university, because I'm an engineer. I, uh, physics is out of bounds for an engineer, and vice versa. With a PhD in physics, I could not teach in an engineering university. So just imagine these very tall walls that we've built around our uh, departments. This has to break. And I think Usman Institute of Technology, with the kind of visionary leadership that I've seen here, is poised to make these uh, break these uh, boundaries. All right, so, and of course we have our regular, we have uh, trained plant biotechnologists, they work on nutrient deficiencies, drought resistance, uh, crops, uh, artificial photosynthesis, Dr. Shazad works on COVID and vaccines and all. So I'm just, and another initiative that talks to bioengineering is LAMS's biodiversity initiative. Now LAMS, in fact, if you come to LAMS, is a garden. It has one uh, sample of all of Punjab's native plants and trees on its premises. And there are hundreds of migratory birds that come to Lums every year, just like they come to the lakes in Sindh. So geotagging of these plants and these species, uh, genetic tagging is underway, and there's a website, biodiversity.lums.edu.pk, that captures all of this beautiful diversity. Uh, we also do a lot of uh, advertisement in Urdu because that's what really is needed. We have our public talks uh, by engineers given in life sciences. And all of this means that our Department of Biology is no longer the Department of Biology, but it has now grown into a Department of Life Sciences. And if you go to the website, I've written a philosophical note on this, on why this transition is really important. Because this is the same transition, uh, moving out of the central dogma of biology, coming out of traditional biology, and entering the world of algorithmics, of um, health, public health, connecting public health with biology. You've heard Dr. Shaper talk about it. So this is key. Moving from the Petri dish to the algorithm, is key. So now we have renamed our Department of Biology to the Department of Life Sciences. And by the way, some little advertisement. We're looking for faculty to teach in these areas, medical devices, clinical robotics, and physiological artificial intelligence uh, in our biomedical systems program. <laughs>